is she sweating or is she glowing from the new backdrop? <laughs> I am sweating. It's hot in here. This backdrop. Look at this. Welcome to Biss Bakery. Have you been here before? Is it your first time? I am not going to be one of those places where I have an iPad and I make you tip for a bagel. I won't do that to you. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Stephanie. And today we are back with another day. So what's going on back here? We've got just baguettes, fresh baguettes, okay? We've got garlic breads. These are really garlic, you hear? They're not real. They're real. I sprayed they're, them they're with like real. a resin. Smell it if you don't believe me. What? They smell like garlic. They're garlic. What? I they're told not you. Real, honey. They're, they're real. Not... We googled a way to preserve them. Why and does it smell have... like garlic? Coconut bread? Smell it. <laughs> I told you. <laughs> They're real. What? I told you. We've got some other breads up here. This Do they one, all smell different? Yes. Let me try that one. This one is called a worm stick. Worm stick. <laughs> what? This one smells like... That is crazy. Like vanilla-y, herby bread. I love it. Oh and my then... Oh god. Where'd wait, you got these? Oh, you don't even know. I went through so many different bakeries China, to make my huh? own. I got it from China, didn't ya? So I got some other breads here. Can you see this? It's so cute. And then we have pineapple puffs. Are you kidding? Wow. Does it smell like pineapple? Yes. Mm, wow. <laughs> and then what? we have a coffee machine a for lime. bakeries. We've got uh, muffins up there for $5. We've got the hanging bulbs, the Edison bulbs. Are you kidding? So today I have this really amazing contraption that I didn't even really know existed. We've got two different hot pots in the middle. It's a split screen. This is milk cheese hot pot. That's weird. I don't know if it's gonna be good. I think it's gonna be good because I like milk. Well, I like almond milk. I like coconut milk and I like cheese. And then we have the spicy Sichuan numbing hot pot here. We've got some Korean cheesy corn, Korean kimchi fried rice, some spicy tuna nuclear kimbaps with some spicy fried tonkatsu kimbaps and some tteokbokki. Wow. And I'm super excited to announce not only do we have the Biss Bakery revealed, but I want to tell you about Casetify's newest Android releases. Every time I do a Casetify video, everyone's like, what about the Androids? What about me? We don't like you. You and your iPhone little mm, get out of here, green bubble text, okay? If you guys have the Samsung S22, the Samsung S22 Plus, yeah, the big boy one, or maybe you're the biggest boy in the club. Maybe you got the Samsung S22 Ultra. Maybe you have the Samsung Z Flip 3, the Pixel 6, the Pixel 6 Pro. It's here. Cases for the new Android devices. Listen, Casetify has got you covered. I don't even remember what my life was like without a Casetify phone case. I love how slim and protective they are. Their impact and impact crush cases are drop test approved for 6.6 .6 feet in the air. And it's so slim that it looks so good. I mean, if you're like me and you love their ultra impact cases, they've got an extra four corners to up the drop protection to 9.8 feet. It's constructed with two layers of Tech 2.0, which is their trademarked impact absorbing material. It's amazing. Casetify even has something called Defensify, which is an antimicrobial coating that eliminates 99% of bacteria that lands on it. There's endless designs to choose from so you get their protection, but you also get the design. You can even customize it with your name, your monogram, or maybe a picture of you, maybe a picture collage. The cases also support wireless charging, which is always important. And yes, the impact cases and ultra impact cases are made of 65% recycled and plant-based materials. Case defies impact crush cases, they're super cool. They're made from upcycled phone cases and everything gets shipped to your door in 100% recyclable packaging. So you can feel good about them. Make sure to check out casetify.com slash biz to get 15% off your new Android phone case. Yes, iPhone users, calm down. It's not about us for once, but you too can get 15% off when you go to casetify.com slash biz or when you use my code 15 bis. that's 15 bis. And thank you Casetify for sponsoring today's video and let's Get into it. If I am out of breath, it's still pollen season. <laughs> it's not because of this backdrop, I swear. Can we get started? Yeah. Should we try a kimbap? Oh yeah, kimbap. Okay, let me try this freaking kimchi fried rice. Oh, it's hot. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm. Okay, let's try the tuna kimbap with some spicy sauce. Mm. Mm. 
This is just a great invention.、Mm -hmm. Whoever can buy hot pot, Chinese hot pot, and the barbecue grill is amazing. Who came up with this? You think? Why don't they have restaurants that do that? Because usually you go to two different restaurants. But what if you could just eat it all in one meal? Exactly. It's like us.、Mm -hmm. Chinese and Korean.、Mm -hmm. Wow, this is us. Is this us? It's us. What if a restaurant had this? Look at how cheesy、Whoa. this is. Oh. oh my god, this is beautiful. Today I'm taking you to the far depths of the internet, the scariest corners of the places that you've never wanted to be. You might want to call your mom. You might want to call your brother. Scary story. Hmm. Scary in a non-traditional sense. Meaning, it's so bizarre, it's so wild, it's so scandalous, and it's so raw and real that it's terrifying. Hmm. Almost choked. Okay, I have to try this cheese milk broth. Wow. Amazing. Wow. It's like milk. It's straight milk. I wonder how that tastes. I need to try this. Oh, that's pretty good. Okay. So this is very confusing. In China? Yes. Yeah. Do you guys drink fish soup? Yeah. Wait. Fish、mm -hmm. soup? You guys、mm -hmm. drink fish、mm -hmm. soup? Mm-hmm. We have like a fish pollock soup. Oh, American. Anyways,、mm -hmm. fish soup when you cook it to a certain、wow. temperature, the soup, the broth turn、uh, turn、milky? white, milky <gasps> like this. Wow. I think this is probably a fish soup. It's pretty good. It's really delicious. Oh, it's really creamy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mmm. It's good for you. Mmm. Tofu skin. Mmm. Oh my god. My goodness. Okay. This、mm. is heaven. Do you see this dipping action? Do you see this cheese action?、Though? Wow. Oh, and then I need to put some cheese on top. You're genius. Are you freaking、this、kidding me? This grill is awesome. We need to do this at parties. That's what we need to do. Mm-hmm. Wow. Okay. Spicy kimbap with some cheese. Hmm. <laughs> Get out of here! It's so good. Last bite. We're getting into the story. Let the hot pot meat wrap a big boy bite of kimchi fried rice. Do you see this? Okay.、Mm. Was it good?、Mm -hmm. That is insane.、Mm. You're right. It's fish. Kind of melts. How is it? Hmm. Amazing. There is on the far corners of the internet a scandal. Not a Watergate, not a PizzaGate, but Reddit's very own PGate. It's not even a Reddit post. It's a Reddit saga, a Reddit journey, a fucking six-parter, and it's、okay. incredibly scandalous. P, you're in. It all started with OP. Her name is Ellie, and her Reddit handle is Planets Ahead. Listen, I would go follow her on Reddit because you need to stay up to date. Her recent、uh, update was only a month ago, so I feel like she's gonna hit us with more updates. She's got six updates so far. Now. Ellie, she is 29 years old, and she's married to a guy. Let's call him Ted. I think that these are all fake names used, except for her cat, whose name is Tortilla, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. So Ted is 34 years old, and they've been together since she's maybe like 19. They met in college. They started dating at some point, and I mean things gradually, gradually got more serious. Ellie graduated first, and Ted was still finishing up his classes. So this is like a flashback to what happened during college days. Now Ted in college is living with his、uh, brother slash roommate by the name of Ash, and Ash is like the youngest. Here's a little note about Ted: they've got ten brothers in that family. His roommate is his brother. Yeah. <laughs> I saw my life flash before my eyes. We literally have the saying: when you're too,、um, when you don't have the patience, you can't eat a hot tofu. You'll literally burn yourself. That's you. For whatever reason, the couple think that it's best for Ellie to move in with them. 
Ellie even made sure with Ash, like, this was okay. Are you sure that it's okay for me to live in Ted's room? Obviously, I'd be paying rent. I do have to bring my cat Tortilla to the apartment. I love my cat. If you say no to my cat, it's completely fine. I understand. Ash, you have a dog. I just want to make sure you're comfortable with it. And Ash is like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, why wouldn't I be comfortable with it? It's fine. It's fine. Move on in. Now, everything's going great when Ellie moves in till about three weeks into this whole setup. Ellie cannot get over the smell of pee that is just permeating through her room. It's so strong. I mean, her eyes are probably watering when she walks in. She's got no freaking idea where it's coming from. Her cat is toilet trained. Oops. Listen, I don't know if that means her cat is litter box trained or straight up the cat is hovering over a toilet because I've seen both. Leave it in the comments. Well, she's thinking then... Both what? Cats peeing in the Have toilet? Have you seen cats pee in the toilet? They're so good. And then who flush it out? Sometimes they can flush it themselves. I know you think it's crazy, So you're but... saying cats are smarter than men. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you said it, not me. That's crazy. <sighs> so hot still. Okay. You're thinking, okay, well, if it's not the cat, then it's the dog. It's Ash's dog. But that also doesn't make sense because Ellie and Ted's room is on the second floor. Ash's dog is a senior and he has hip problems. He can't even go up the stairs. So why is it that Ellie is finding clothes on the floor smelling like pee? It just doesn't make sense to her. Ted, do you have any idea where the pee smell is coming from? He's like, no, got no idea. On week two of this happening, Ellie's fed up. She asks Ash, hey, for some reason, are you carrying your dog upstairs by any chance? And maybe when he's unsupervised, he sneaks into our room and pees? And at this point, Ellie is not leaving clothes around anymore, but she still finds literal pee stains on her shoes, on her decorative pillows, everywhere. Ash is just sitting there like, I don't know what you're talking about. I think maybe it's your cat. Maybe Tortilla, I mean, he's a male cat. He could be marking his territory. This is a new place. You just moved in. Maybe your cat is peeing on your things. I mean, it kind of made sense. The pee was only on Ellie's things, not Ted's, and her cat might have been marking his territory. But Ellie trusted her cat. She knew her cat would never betray her like this. So Ellie sets up a camera in her room and she tells Ted, and he was completely fine with it, right? Now Ellie waits. She waited and waited and waited, and she knew that her cat would never do this to her, or so she thinks, <clears throat> till she finds another pee stain. She checks the camera footage. And lo and behold, she sees the squatting on her stuff, the peeing on her snuff. Have you ever smelled cat pee? No. It's very different from human pee. She saw in that video Ash coming into their room and peeing on their stuff. Ellie was so what? freaking pissed and disturbed. I mean, who does that? What does that even mean? Is he going to strangle me in my sleep? Like, imagine a full-grown 20-something-year-old, 25, I think he was at the time, 25-year-old peeing on your stuff. That's the brother, right? Yeah. So Ellie packs her bag, stays with a friend till Ted finishes college. Ellie refused to confront Ash when all of this happened. She just let her boyfriend deal with it because this is his brother. She just really never talked to Ash ever again. Sure, Ash was the best man at their wedding, but they try to keep clear of each other. Even at family gatherings, they just kind of stay away from each other. Now, fast forward to the pandemic. Ellie and Ted have bought a house together. They're living that married couple life just with their cat, having a blast of a time, right? Well, Ash ends up getting fired from his job and is about to get evicted from his apartment. Oh, no. And he asks them, he asks his brother, Ted. So she never followed up with the boyfriend to ask him, hey, what, what's wrong with your brother? Mm. Mm-hmm. She did. Oh. Like, is, he, is it like a pillow soaked in piss or is it like a marking? It's a pretty, it's a lot of pee. Either way, can you think of a reason? <laughs> Right? I feel like even a little is alarming. <laughs> so the guy is struggling financially and he's like, Hey, Ted, can I move in with you, please? I'm going through such a rough time. I just need a place to stay. Ted was conflicted. He asked Ellie and Ellie's like, what are you talking about? He literally peed on my stuff. I mean, I don't want him to live with me. Sure, he was only 25 when that happened and now he's like, what, 30? But 25 is a grown ass man. Ellie declined politely. Like, babe, love you so much, love your family, want to love your family as much as you love them, but like, I can't do that. I mean, this is a really good reason, I thought, right? Like, if this was you and my sister's peeing on your stuff, wow, what a sight. If my sister's peeing on your stuff, I would never be upset if you never wanted to see my sister again. That's a really weird thing to do. 
But now, Ellie's getting text messages from her in-laws calling her an asshole for leaving Ash, quote, homeless in the middle of a pandemic. What? The rest of their family can't take him in because they live on the West Coast. And his profession, they didn't really disclose what it was, but it's more prominent in the East Coast. So if he were to move out West, it would just make it harder for him to find a job. Mm -hmm. Now, her in-laws are very forgive and forget people. They would say things like, well, Ash only really peed on your things once. I mean, it wasn't many, many times. It's just like a face. You know what I'm talking about? Like he's really, you really think he's going to do it again? No, he's not. It was just a pee face. He's outgrown it. He's a new man. That's their vibe. So Ellie wants to know, am I the asshole? Am I the asshole for holding a grudge because he peed on my stuff? But he is losing his house and his cat deserves a home. I asked and they made it very clear that I can't just take the cat and leave Ash to be without a house. I know I'm justified to be mad, but Ted, my husband, says he can't do that to his brother and the job market is better here for Ash. So she's asking if she should take him back. Yes. Home. Now. Well, what about the reason? That's, that's, that's the most the important. That's the updates. Okay. So first of all, tons of people asked a ton of questions. Like what you're asking, why did Ash even pee on her stuff? Yeah. Did she ever find out? Well, she said that Ash and Ted were best friends and Ellie coming into Ted's life was threatening that bond. What? That brotherly bond. Are you five? I don't know. And Are as a five year old? As a coping mechanism, he peed on her things to get back at her for ruining all their right. brotherhood. All right, so then that's no. <laughs> <laughs> what would be a good reason though? Like what would be an acceptable reason? Please leave it in the comments. A good reason? Okay, number one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <clears throat> mm -hmm. What's the word? Hey um, babe, why'd you pee on my um, shoes? Sleepwalking. That's mm -hmm. a good reason. I was drunk. Drunk, yes. Mm -hmm. Drunk. That's another good reason. Remember Andrew Pa's story of his friend who has passed out and uh, someone peed on him? Yeah, a girl peed on another guy's face. Mm-hmm while she was drunk. Yeah. And, and the guy was so drunk, he just fell back to sleep. Or was he so drunk? Maybe yeah. he just liked it. Right. <laughs> Third reason, mm -hmm. he's into it. But that's weird too. It is weird, but he's into it. It's, it's a kink. It's not okay. You shouldn't be doing it, mm -hmm. but it's a kink. You know what I mean? Now, then you'd be like, okay, you know what? I stopped peeing on people. I just peed on people consensually. <laughs> you know, I have a way out now like I, I go to these special places and I just peed on people But what he's doing now is he's acting a grown ass man acting like a five-year-old guys watch out for five-year-old Mr. Mango butt. He'd be giving him golden showers to other kids toys. Okay, what the heck? That's weird. Now, this only pushed Ted away because when they finally did reconnect it was at their mom's urging so Ted was no contact with Ash for a while cuz What the hell dude you just peed on my girlfriend's stuff. That's weird. Now, mm -hmm. Ash had been in therapy. He also promised to stay away from Ellie and never go to their house. And as for why he was in the wedding, it was a smaller family-oriented wedding. All the siblings of both Ellie and Ted were gonna be part of the wedding, par wedding party. So mm -hmm. it, it just kind of felt mean to exclude him. So anyway, do you think Ellie should have let Ash move in with them even though it probably would give her, and she said, PTSD? <laughs> so a lot of people were saying no absolutely not and honestly you need to have a talk with your husband Ted and I agree with this sentiment in the beginning because first of all I would never in a million years think your family would ever do this but if they ever did text me that I was an asshole for doing something that I'm clearly not an asshole for doing I would blame that on you because what makes them feel so comfortable to do that yeah. Does that I mean, make sense? Yeah, like, I would, I would cut them off. Yeah, because if my sister ever texted you such harsh words, like something I did gave her the impression that that was okay to talk to you like that. No? No. So I feel like there's something weird there. Not weird, but not okay. And a lot of Redditors pointed that out. Now, P-Gate part two. The update. Ted the husband saw the post and instead of being upset by it, Ted actually realized his wrongs. I know, kind of shocking. Ted was apologizing profusely to Ellie. He felt bad. I mean, once he started reading the Reddit comments, he realized, okay, yeah, that was really it's shitty crazy. of me to put you in this type of situation. And like, now that I think about it, why are my family talking to you like that? That's not okay. And honestly, even when Ash peed on your stuff, I should have had him apologize to you and not just apologize to me because it was your things he peed on. It was yeah. you that was victimized by this. Like that was all my fault. So he kept apologizing and apologizing and apologizing. 
And now Ted put his foot down and he said, yeah, no, Ash, you're not moving in during quarantine. I don't care. And I'm going to tell the rest of the family that. But Ted, still being a good brother, Ted starts calling around in his contacts to see if he can get jo Ash a job somewhere. One of those people were actually a professional connection of his that worked at the same place that Ash was fired from. So he's calling like, you know, John of ABC Company and Ash was fired from ABC Company. And he's like, hey, John, you know, my brother lost his mm. job. He was like, go and just wondering if you have any other contacts outside of ABC Company who are looking for a position. And he freaking tells Ted, wait, what? Ash wasn't fired. He quit. And we're actually kind of understaffed right now, so he's more than welcome to get his job back. That was weird. Oh my god. So they're like, what the fork? I mean, just when you think this story is going to be pretty much the end here, there is like this, what are you talking about? Now, Ellie's so confused, and it goes into like this full-on horror movie vibes. Ted decides he's going to go over to Ash's place and have a little chat with him. Why did you lie about getting fired from your job? So Ted goes by himself, of course. Ellie stays behind safely at home, and now she doesn't really know it at the time, but there was a huge shit show happening behind the scenes. The rest of the family found out about Ellie's post on Reddit, and they realized that a lot of the things didn't add up. First of all, Ted has nine other brothers. Like, eight of them are, yeah, eight or nine of, nine. Total of 10. It's a huge family, and they all collectively feel like there's two versions of this story. The one that they were told by their mom, and the truth, which seemed to be more in Ellie's version of events. The brothers were under the impression that Ash apologized directly to Ellie and not just to Ted. And this whole seeing a therapist thing just seemed really fishy to them. We later find out that the mom, Ted and Ash's mom, she said she wanted him to see a therapist. Clearly, Ash didn't want to see a therapist. So instead of telling her no, he said, yeah, mom, if you pay for it. So she starts giving him cash for therapy. Oh my gosh. And he's not using it for therapy. He never went to a therapist. She did find out but she didn't tell anyone at the time. Her priority was to get Ted and Ash back into talking terms. So she covered for Ash's lie and was protecting him the whole time. She said in her defense, Ash seemed to outgrow the P phase and he was trying to get his life back together. Now the rest of the brothers, they're really pissed off at their mom about this. The brothers had no idea that Ash tried to gaslight Ellie into thinking that her cat was the cause of the pee. That was also a big no-no. Like, why are you constantly telling her that he's the one marking the territory, territory when you're the one pissing on the ground? It also turns out that this was not the only time he peed on things. Because of this, the eldest brother, <laughs> someone had peed on his daughter's things. His daughter was 14 years old. This is Ash's 14-year-old niece. Cow. Now, I don't think they had a pet because they were really confused by this. And now this, they were like, holy shit, that did happen after Ash visited. So it seemed like everyone in the family had their own little version of events of what happened. When it came together, it seems like this Ash guy has got a peeing problem. Now, Ted is disgusted. He's enraged with this. He later tells Ellie what happened when he gets to Ash's place. He said, I went into the bedroom and I found Ash's room on the nightstand. There was a wedding album that was at their mom's house, but now was at Ash's house. Wedding? Wedding album Who, of the... Ted and Ellie's. Uh-huh. Soaked in urine. What? Soaked in urine, bro. What's wrong with this dude? What is that? Like, he, he, he's trying to take it out on them, or? Yeah. What kind of problem, what kind of issue is that? I have no idea. I'm sorry, what? Ted also finds Ash's new cat that he just adopted hiding under the bed, not only completely afraid, but malnourished, and she was covered in pee and man juice. <gasps> so at this point, Ash isn't home, and Ted doesn't even care. He just needs to get the cat to the vet ASAP. On the way to the vet, he's calling up his brothers, filling them in on what's going on. There was a lot of rage, especially from brother number one. All of the brothers were so pissed at their mom for always protecting Ash, the youngest one. I mean, explain this. She's sobbing and she's like, well, Ash is always the smallest one, the younger of the boys. And I, I don't know if it's just because he was always bullied by all of you and I was never able to protect him from you guys. So I feel like it's my fault the way he turned out and now I need to protect him. Um... Ted is telling Ellie this on the phone, well, bits and pieces of it, while he's driving to the vet. And Ellie, being a cat lover, I mean, she really doesn't care about all of that. She just wants to be with the cat now. She hops into her car, and while she's driving, they get a random delivery. This is like middle of the day, by the way. So she's driving to the vet to meet Ted there. 
and she sees on like her ring or her nest app like you know one of those doorbell cameras there's a delivery and you can clearly see the delivery guy is holding flowers so she pulls over because that's the most bizarre thing ever and she's like the, the guy is waiting for her to open the door oh uh, you can just leave it on the porch oh also does it come with a note does it have a card or something yeah do you can you just read it for me it said, Ellie did me dirty by sharing our problems online. Anything that comes from this will be on her. So whatever happens is on Ellie. So he's planning something? Ellie was so confused. She was like, okay, thank you. Just leave it in the car or leave it in the porch. She sobbed in her parked car and she was so confused and lost and honestly scared by this. She drove to her sister's house. She doesn't want this to come between her and her husband, but it feels like it's ripping them apart and it's like ripping his family apart. And she feels like she's the problem, even though she's not. Like she definitely didn't do anything wrong, but I'm sure you can imagine like the feeling of like, God, what is happening? Yeah. And Ellie always wanted this really big family and happy gatherings. I mean, she's a really family-oriented person. So this is really painful. And her husband is honestly super sweet. The fact that he has to go through this, I mean, it's got to be even more confusing and crazy and scary for him. And the cat, like, is the cat okay? What if Ash hurts himself? Is she going to feel guilty for the rest of her life? What if, what if Ash hurts Ted or her or another cat? I mean, it's just scary. It's so... So bad. And she said in the update, ironically enough, she really has PTSD now and not in the funny way. Straight up, if she hears a pee of stream right now, like pee hitting the water in the toilet bowl, she feels a tightness in her chest. Thankfully, Ellie is staying with her parents. She's starting therapy soon, but the whole thing remains a shit show. Brother number one wants to get the police involved since his daughter was a minor. I mean, what does he mean by peeing on her things? It's creepy. Some of the brothers had to come from California or the West Coast all the way to the East Coast to try to find Ash and be with Ted. They did find Ash and a lot of, a lot of punches were thrown and eventually it led to Ash being admitted to a psych ward. He's gonna be evaluated for a ton of things, a piss long list of things, I imagine. And Ash, Ash's cat also didn't make it. At some point later in the year, she developed some sort of kidney problem that went untreated. It was all direct from the abuse and the neglect. Honestly, like this is scary stuff. Yeah. Like anytime I hear someone that's so unhinged, yeah. that's so not normal, that's just scary. But there's more. Okay. So later the family find out that Ash was peeing on brother number one's daughter's things because Ash was severely bullied by his eldest brother growing up and he decided to pee on the daughter's things as a way to get back to him. It had nothing to do with the daughter herself. Just revenge pee, I guess. So that was update number two. We get pee gate part three, an update on everyone. Ellie is not really talking to the rest of the brothers. Even though some of them apologize for being dicks to her and calling her an asshole for not taking an ash during the quarantine, um, she's just not really talking to them. Ted is handling everything as best as he can. He's also in therapy and he's working through all those complex emotions. He just feels horrible about how this is all affecting his wife Ellie. He feels horrible for even wanting to help Ash in the first place. I mean, the whole thing, the way that his family is treating Ellie, the mom, the mom is, well, she's saying things like, I've worked for years in order to have the lot of you together. I've forgiven every single, each one of you for every little thing you've done, and this is how you repay me? By getting a little bitch in the way of our family? Dang. So there's that. And Ash is in the psychiatric care. He did try to ask for Ted to come visit him, which was a big no-no. Soon, Ash is going to be transferred to a facility in the West Coast, and he's going to be closer to the rest of his family. Now, Ellie, she also got a restraining order against Ash. She doesn't think that he's some sort of serial killer per se, but he's just really disturbed. He's got an unhealthy coping mechanism and obviously very unhealthy emotional attachments. She also kind of agrees with the Redditor that pointed out that everyone that he abused so far has been woman. He peed on Ellie's yes, things, that's what his I own said. niece's things. Sunny, his cat, is a female cat. I don't know, maybe it's some sort of connection. So then we enter part four of P-Gate. Ellie and Pam are taking time apart. They broke up? Yeah, I was honestly shocked by this update. I was invested. I was like, maybe they're couple goals. They're not getting a divorce as of right now. Ted feels like he just has a lot of work to get through and her being around makes it harder is how she phrased it. Ted gave her permission to update the Reddit thread and the burning question most people had was, tell us about the other things. 
So Ellie just out here spilling all the secrets. Well, it turns out that the 10 brothers had three sisters too. Two of them, I know. <laughs> the family still doesn't believe in contraception. <laughs> two of the sisters died in the hospital of a birth defect. They were twins. And one of the sisters, she was in a motorcycle accident with one of the brothers who was driving intoxicated underage and she died. And now Ellie is living with her parents. She quit her job. She's unemployed. She's trying to focus on therapy. Then we get P-gate part five. Ted wants a divorce. After everything they've been through, Ellie says she understands, but she doesn't really because she still loves him. He's a huge part of who she is. I mean, they met in college. Everything was seemingly going well until this whole P-gate situation. Ted said, as much as it hurts, I need a divorce in order to heal from everything that's happened. He kept saying things like, I can't do this to you. I would never forgive myself for putting you in this situation. I don't want to expose you to my family ever again and let them keep hurting you. Ellie was frustrated because it felt like he was choosing what he wanted for her and not letting her have the choice. Ellie's therapist even explained he's probably doing this to protect himself, to appease his own guilt. Mm -hmm. Perhaps not having Ellie around will make him forget everything that happened and he can pretend like it never happened. Either way, very painful. Ellie said she felt like she always saw them as a team and now his solution was to just get rid of the team. At one point, the former mother-in-law, whether to be with Asher to visit Ted flew to the East Coast and showed up at Ellie's mother's house. Her parents were at work, it was during work hours, and she just laid it down on Ellie. She didn't even care that Ellie was sobbing on the floor at one point. She just went on and on about how she broke up the family, all of her failures as a wife, she couldn't wait for the divorce, about how Ted was gonna take every money from her, she's gonna have nothing at all after this divorce, after everything that she's done. And she said that she's so happy that Ellie is childless and they couldn't conceive a child because the idea of sharing blood with Ellie made, one, made her want to gag. You know, a lot of time you hear these people who act like a child. Yeah. It's because the mother babies them, treats yeah. them like a child. So for him to pee on people, that's such a child yeah. move. That's mm -hmm. such a baby. Like, oh, I, I'm pissed at you. I'm going to pee on you. I feel like the mother probably did a lot of damage by babying the son. Mm -hmm. They said the hardest part about being a mother mm -hmm. is when you have to stop being a mom. I know it sounds counterintuitive because you're like, no, I'm always going to be a mom. And like you are, but you can't be the same mom that you were when they were 10. Like you got to fucking let them go and watch them get hurt, which is very not a mom thing to do. Because mm -hmm. as a mom, your instinct is like, why would I watch my kid get hurt? She said that was the thing that hurt the most. Her talking about the childlessness. I mean, it's not like they were trying to have a baby, but they weren't not trying, if that makes sense. Mm. Now, as for Ash, He's now on the West Coast and Ellie is filled briefly about his filled in briefly about his state. Doctors believe that he had some sort of psychotic break, that all of the bullying from the brothers had affected him. Now, Ted filled Ellie in on some of the bullying because she was confused. Like how was he bullied when he was young? And Ted said there was punching, it was humiliating, there was mocking, tricking, insulting. They also locked Ash into a cabinet, stole his clothes, left him outside all night long. Sometimes they locked him inside without a bathroom so he would pee himself. They threatened him with a variety of weapons. They left him in places and made him walk miles home, even in the hottest summer or the coldest winters. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. Why, why didn't he say that from the exactly. beginning? Exactly. Why did the, the brother not say it from the beginning? So Ted That they're messed up. Human being. Ted was actually the only one that was best friends with Ash, so he would try to protect Ash from the rest of the brothers. That's mm. why they were so close. Dang. The other brothers would put him in adult diapers, they would tie him up and drag him through the backyard, they dumped cold water on him and then locked him outside in the winter, they put itching powder in his underwear, and on and on, and I mean, really bad stuff. Ellie says, that's pretty, that's yeah, like not just really that's bad. That's not bullying, that's, that's like, like abuse. And the whole response, so their dad died um, like when Ash was pretty young. And the mom's whole response was, oh, uh, I hate moms who say this. Boys will be boys. Oh my god, dude. Yeah. See, I, I don't know if I, I mean, the, those brothers were pretty fucked up by yeah. doing that. But where's the parents, right? Exactly. Where it's, is someone who's telling them stop fucking around? Yeah, like don't do that ever again. Like what's wrong with you? Like this mom, I don't think the mom can handle 10 boys. Yeah. No, Ellie says it doesn't excuse Ash's behavior, but she kind of gets it. And Ash probably blames his mom for not protecting him since their dad passed away. And maybe that caused his hatred of women. That's food for thought because your parent is supposed to protect you, See, right? See, that's what I'm saying. Like everything has a reason. Yes. 
So you, you can always find a reason, understand why someone behaves certain ways. That's why yeah. it didn't make sense for me, like so he, the way he acts. Now it makes perfect sense. Again, doesn't justify, but... Yeah, but yeah. She's, a, she's obviously a victim yeah. in this. But the brothers too, like... They're crazy. Yeah, like... I mean, even when they were calling her and calling her an asshole, after everything that happened, yeah, it's like, something's wrong with you, obviously. Yeah, you guys you take them in. exactly what happened. No, the brothers would also alienate girls from Ash by telling them lies anytime he tried to get a girlfriend in high school. So it was bad. Now, that was just five months ago, and I hope she's doing well. Honestly, yeah, f*** Ted. Like, I know she loves him because she's a super sweet person, but the guy is... <sighs> I don't know. I don't like his excuse. It's honestly kind of a shitty phrasing. Like, if you can't take it, just say you can't take it. Don't make this a whole protector, I'm protecting you. No, I want this relationship. You can't take it. Like, you can't do it. Like, don't make it about me. You're the weak one, not me. I don't like that. So anyways, she did a P-gate part six just a month ago. Ted called Ellie for Christmas, and for the first time ever, she didn't answer. And Ellie, being a great person, pointed out something that I obviously didn't even consider, which was... um. Well, it's easy to villainize Ted, but he lost a lot of brothers in the process. They blame him for everything that happened. He lost Ash, who was his brother and his best friend, and he lost their shared cat, Tortilla. He lost his wife, Ellie. He even lost his mom. Like, he really doesn't have anyone, whereas Ellie has her parents. She has her friends. She also has a new Reddit community. So Ellie is honestly so strong. I think you can even hear through the words how much better she's doing. Like just the way that she progressed as a human, if that makes sense. She's honestly just embracing her solitude. I don't know if it's the therapy or the time, but truly amazing. So that's our update as of now. And that's Pigate. Um, hopefully there's more updates in the future, but you can keep following her Reddit on Planets Ahead. But there's what more. What does that mean, Planets Ahead? That's her Reddit handle. Oh. <laughs> yeah, but there's more. Not peeing, but am I the asshole stories that are honestly so wild, I can't even, okay? There was this guy on a throwaway account, and he just got straight to the point. He said, am I the asshole for refusing to bow to my Korean fiance's grandparents? <sighs> yes, now we can assume that he's white because he says a very interesting thing. He doesn't flat out say that he's white, but he's not Korean. He's okay. not of any bowing culture. So I know that there's some South Asian cultures that bow, I believe. But he's not of any bowing culture. So he yeah. said, my fiance is Korean American and I'm American. <laughs> and we've met each other's parents before. She's met my grandparents and I haven't met her grandparents yet since they live in Korea. So we're planning a trip out there ASAP so I can meet them. He said, now she's asking me to bow to her grandparents when we meet since respecting the elders is a big deal in Korean culture. Not just like a casual dip, like a full 90 degree bow. I said, ooh, I'd rather not. I find it emasculating. And I just don't bow wait, to anybody. Wait, 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 wait. He thinks bowing is... <laughs> wait, wait, wait. So real men don't, don't bow. bow. There's actually a full, like, I want to say a long a reddit thread on the, like a comment thread that's like this is the type of guy that doesn't even bend down to pick up something because it's <laughs> <laughs> they said if you walk by this guy and throw something at his face he'll just get hit by it because ducking is kind of like bowing <laughs> and it's emasculating yes <laughs> And he said, I just don't bow to anyone. She said it's important for her culture, but I pointed out it was hypocritical to expect me to bow to her grandparents when she didn't bow to mine. <laughs> her grandparents aren't my superiors just because of their age. Why should I have to bow? What? She said it's one tiny thing I could do to earn their respect, but I said if it's a tiny thing, then they should be fine if I don't do it. Oh my god. Oh my god, this can't be real. <laughs> I, this, can't, this can't be real. I respect myself and that's why I'm not gonna bow. She's, I respect myself! <laughs> and she's just gonna have to respect my decision. She thinks I'm an asshole, but I don't really think so. Am I the asshole? <laughs> 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 Listen, this guy just sounds oh, exhausting. I do not get along with people that like to argue like this. You know when they like to argue every little thing like this and it's just not something you need to turn into a fucking masculinity thing. Like, bro, it's a different culture. Just get with the program. Like, okay, am I crazy for feeling this way? Please let me know if I am. 
if I go to my friend's house and I respect my friend, my friend respects me, and they say, and let's say they're religious, like super religious, her parents are devout Christians, they pray before every meal, out of respect for her human to human, listen, I'm not religious, but I'm just gonna bow my head and close my eyes with them. I'm not gonna sit there and yell the loudest MN when they're done, right? But as long as they're not pushing religion onto me, I think it's such a small thing. I, I don't think I'm gonna wake up with the Holy Spirit whispering in my ear because I prayed a little. It's just respectful. Yeah. Like, you could just freaking Especially zone out. Especially when you're a guest. Yes. <laughs> like, what are you trying to do here? Exactly. And this is, okay, obviously it's different if I just met you and you're like, let's pray. I'm like, okay, that's a little weird. But this is your fiance. This is someone you supposedly love. Also, a Redditor pointed out you're emasculating yourself by being hung up on what's so manly. You know when guys think too hard about what's manly? Like, that's so not manly. But I did see some Redditors who say, oh, like, I'm white, and it was something I had to learn in Taekwondo, is you always bow to the teacher. They could be younger than you, but you bow. And the first thing that they teach you in a lot of these classes is in Western culture, you think bowing is submissive, but in a lot of Eastern cultures, bowing is a sign of respect. Yeah, it's like when me and your mom yeah. play ping pong, we bow. Oh yeah, yeah, they bow It's first. just like, a, it's a, yes. like she does it and I'm like, oh shit, I yes. have to do it. Like it's just... It's weird. Yeah, it's, it seems like you're just showing respect yeah. to each other, right? And then like Koreans, we go even further. Like we bow to people who are a couple years older. Like maybe not a 90 degree bow. So I would maybe understand if the girlfriend was asking him to bow to her older sister who is maybe like three years older. Mm -hmm. Like I wouldn't ask you to bow to my sister because like... I mean, again, again, I mean... Culture, again, like, it does, yeah. When you're talking about someone's culture and mm -hmm. stuff, it's like... But he, he thinks something has yeah. to do with like mas masculinity and that's it's just so weird. weird. So Imagine he's like, nah, man, I can't make sandwiches. <laughs> I can't. Like, he's like, I can't even. He starts walking around the living room, never steps foot <laughs> in the kitchen. He just has the, like the worst lips on earth. He's like, chapstick? Nah, that's a bitch thing, yeah? <laughs> like, you know what I mean? <laughs> it's just like crust everywhere. <laughs> And what's crazy is this isn't even the formal Korean bow. Listen. listen. Oh, the one on the floor? This is normal everyday bow. When you're in Korea or when you're in a group of older Koreans, I'm doing this non stop. 90 degrees, that's a normal. You do this at work, you do this at school, you do this in your day to day. The Korean bow, I'm talking on New Year's Day, your family, the elders, are sitting on plush sofas. You get on the ground. <laughs> knees to the ground. Plop your knees. You want to bruise them up, okay? Forehead to the floor right next to their stinky ass feet. That one is, well, at least in my family, it's typically reserved for underage people. Like, they're not going to make me do that anymore, I don't think. <laughs> <laughs> like, I guess I could be more understanding if you said no to that. Because it is, like, even me but being Korean, I'm like, But you only do that at eh. very, very special occasions. Like weddings. Like weddings, exactly. Yes, and those, okay, wedding, for sure. Also him pointing out, well, she didn't bow to my grandparents. Bro. Like, like when was it in American culture to bow to someone? Yeah, I'll, I'll give you a bow. If, if they want to bow, I'll, I'll, give, I'll give them even a full split. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I don't want to sound like a hypocrite because I have done a little rant about this before, but I don't like the bowing culture in two occasions i'm korean so i can have my little complaints okay one occasion when we're in america and you're a guy who is two years older than me or maybe you're a girl and we speak english we don't speak korean and you want me in all of that to bow to you and call you anni and oppa get out of here get out of here i'm not doing it okay i'm not bowing to you you're two years older than me and you're talking to me in english Maybe if I was in Korea, it's a little bit different. And then sometimes it is annoying when your parents want you to respect someone and you know they shouldn't be respected. Like you just know that they're a nasty adult and like it's annoying to bow. So I always do a sideways one. <laughs> like I don't do a full 90 because I want them to know. So when it's your girlfriend's grandparents and they have no re and you have no reason to disrespect them, just bow. You're being weird. So you ask if he's the asshole and people tell him that you are the asshole yeah. and then what happened? And he was just like defending himself and he was like, well, my girlfriend's not going to break up with me because I'm rich. Shut up. Yeah. No. And a lot of people what? pointed out that not only did he decide to completely dog on Korean culture, but he essentially said that any man that bows, you're not a real man. So he thinks he's better than all of these men. Oh, no. 
He's better than me. He's better than you. <laughs> He's better than me. <laughs> I mean, I just don't understand. Now, this next one is equally wild, but for very different reasons. It was posted two years ago by a throwaway account. Let's call this guy Brian. Brian lives in an apartment slash dorm with three of his friends. Honestly, they all get along pretty well, except one of them. One of them is just kind of gross. Let's call him Chad. Now, you're thinking, Chad doesn't do the dishes. Chad doesn't clean up after himself. Chad leaves his dirty socks around the house. No, but rather, the guy has a board, a bulletin board that he hung up in the living room, filled, filled with Supreme stickers. That's not the rude part. And you're like, oh, maybe he posts some passive aggressive notes on there about how everyone needs to cut the lights, right? No. This is a million times worse. Chad would pin his used condoms onto the board to show off. Wait. He called it his um, did... scoreboard. In his defense, because yeah, everyone is like, what the fuck? Chad cleans and dries the condoms before pinning them on the wall. Cleans it and then dries it and then pins it on the wall. And there are six condoms total on the board. <laughs> I know, I know, I thought the same thing. I thought the same thing. The roommates have tried to talk to him. <laughs> what is he? He's trying to expose himself then. <laughs> yeah. That's what I'm saying. If you're trying to brag, like, you can't do it with six. Come on, bro. Now, yeah. the roommates tried to talk to him, like, hey, you need to not put this in the living room. I think you need to get rid of it in general, but if you don't want to, keep it in your room. Chad doesn't like that. He wants to keep it in the living room. He doesn't see why it's a big deal. He's like, well, I f***ing clean the condoms. Why can't I just leave it out? It's aesthetic. I've got, I spent a lot of money on these Supreme stickers. Well, yesterday, Brian's friend, who was a girl, came over, and she, he was super excited. He liked this girl. So she comes over and he made sure before she came over to move the condom board. But somehow the condom board is on the fucking wall when they walk in. Okay, so he knew that this is not good in front of a girl. Yes. So okay. she confronts him and she's just so uncomfortable. Even his explanation, I don't think I would buy it. Would you? You imagine, well, this is your roommate. You're probably just like him. Like, I can't even imagine what you say about girls when we walk out of the room. I can't imagine what you three talk about in here when women aren't around. I gotta go. So she left. And in anger, Brian's like, God, I'm really not like Chad. He smashed the bulletin board. And it was an expensive one. It wasn't like a cork board. I think it was like a, like a white board. Like one of those glass white boards or something. And all those Supreme stickers. He smashed it to pieces and threw it away. Chad confronted him and Brian told him exactly what he did. And Brian says, I do feel bad for reacting that way, but I was angry. And the body count board was bound to be thrown away. No? Am I the asshole? <laughs> this is absolutely crazy. I mean, it's so dehumanizing. It's sexist. You get it. All the serious things. But on a lighter note, how are you going to brag with just six? <laughs> what are your thoughts on guys who brag about how many women they've slept with? Like, if you heard a guy... Talk about how, and then they're like, hey, hey, what about you? What about you? Wait, I've asked that. <laughs> I just spit out food. How many oh, girls did you say, what about you? What about you? I don't know. It's just cringe. Mm -hmm. Just so cringe. It's like a little boy thing. I guess I get it. Like, I guess when you're like 18, like you just, you're young, I guess. But if mm -hmm. like you pass a certain age, that's still what you're bragging about. That's just yeah. weird. It gives you weird creepy Just vibes. insecurity, right? Yeah. It sounds more insecurity than, yes. than anything else. Do women talk about that too or no? You call me guys? Um, not really. I, I'm trying to think. I don't think I remember like a, like I think you ask your friends for curiosity, uh -huh. but it's never. But not like I'm more than you. Yeah. I think like oh. maybe you can brag about how many orgasms you've had by being with someone and not by yourself. That's a brag. Oh, you guys brag? Probably. Girls brag? You're like, guess what? I didn't have to fake it. They're like, damn, we're so jealous. <laughs> yeah, so I guess the standards really are different, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now let's talk about Kevin. Kevin is 25 and he has a 23 year old girlfriend. Let's call her Carol. This is one of the most bad crazy posts I've ever seen on Reddit. He says, and I quote, I'm going to read everything like verbatim. I have a girlfriend who is absolutely beautiful, but she does have a large facial scar. Listen, I don't know about the wording. The butt just rubs me the wrong way. I have a girlfriend who's very beautiful, but she does have a large facial scar. So what if you say, I have a girlfriend that has a large facial scar. But she is beautiful. No. 
I think it should be, I have a girlfriend who's very beautiful. She happens to have a large facial scar. That's pertinent to the story. Right? That's like, because then, yeah, okay. you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, so yeah. anyways, he's like, my family often jokes about it. <laughs> <laughs> they have a super dark sense of humor. It bothers my girlfriend, and she says it doesn't feel like a joke. It feels like she's being insulted under the pretense of it being dark humor. Even though I explain, it's just how they are, and they don't mean any harm. She really doesn't want to be around my family, and I told her it's really important for me to spend Christmas with the family. We would all quarantine first and test, but it was important to me. And she resisted at first, but after some urging, she gave in. She said I absolutely could not, though, excuse their behavior if they made a rude comment about her. I mean, that's literally not high standards at all. Like, it's very normal. We get there, and it's fine for a while. And then my sister and my mom broke out their matching ugly Christmas sweaters, which was a sweater with my girlfriend's face screen printed on it. No! Yeah. And they both... Dude, that's beyond f***ed up. That's not dark humor. That's just, like, that's, like, assault. Yeah, that's... that's you like, yeah, not jail. Uh, you're going to jail. I'm calling the cops. Bro, that's yeah. worse than high school bullying. You're yeah. like, what is this? They both laughed, and my mom said she made them, and it was just a joke. Dad laughed because he thought it was hilarious. I even chuckled a little bit because my girlfriend is really beautiful. So it's ironic that they put her on the ugly Christmas sweater because she's beautiful. What's wrong with this guy? This yeah. guy is part of it. <laughs> he's, he's, he's enjoying every second of it. I think, okay, well, do you want to know my thoughts or do you want to know at the end? Uh, tell, tell me at the end. Okay, my girlfriend looked at me and when I said that they were just being ironic, she shook her head, got up and left. Didn't say anything to anyone, got in the car and left. I called her several times and she didn't answer. The only text I got was, you need to find your own way home. That pissed me off. I called a few more times and the whole time my mom is upset because it was just a joke. And she didn't even realize my girlfriend was going to overreact like that. I told her that a warning at least would have been nice, but my sister agreed, it's just a joke. And my girlfriend was being a baby about it. When I get home, I have a huge fight with my girlfriend. She said I was an asshole for putting her in this situation and I didn't realize that they were gonna do that. They were being ironic because she's beautiful. She's going on about how I let them treat her badly and I'm just trying to make it her fault when it's the family acting badly. I said, it's just a joke and you're overreacting. She's like, how's it supposed to be a joke? It's just their sense of humor. Like, I'm sorry that you're offended, but your overreaction ruined the whole holiday. Wow. And she said, no, then realizing that I'm not going to take it anymore is what ruined the day. We aren't speaking currently. I did talk to a cousin about it who straight up called me an asshole. I don't really think I did anything wrong. Like, I didn't know they were going to do that. And truly, it was just a joke. Like, it was an ironic joke, you know, irony. I think she's overreacting. Am I the asshole? <laughs> I can't. What's happening? The fact that he wrote this all down. I just can't. I'm sure if her side of the story would be way worse. Her than side the of way the story he... would be a novel. Yeah. And this guy's like, I don't see what's wrong. Someone commented, you are such an asshole. I really want to smack you over the head with this fact. Another Redditor who has a facial scar says, it's not about being ugly or being called ugly. Like, we can deal with that. People don't get facial scars in a vacuum. Like, it's likely that something traumatic happened to cause the scar. So not only are you making fun of her for being, quote, ugly, but you're also reminding her of this traumatic event and then victimizing it and using it against her. Also, most of us have dark humor. How is this dark humor? Like, Reddit is the place for dark humor. Like, I already heated up. How do people even write these things and think, yeah, that makes a ton of sense. Like, the fact that his mom and sister spent money into bullying her on a holiday, or just in general, you would think that's a, how is that a light joke? I mean, the whole family are major league assholes. I genuinely think that his mom and sister are jealous of the girlfriend. She probably does have a banging personality. She probably has... She's beautiful. She's banging, right? They want to tear her down. Probably. The only thing that they can pick on is the facial scar because they're probably. losers. Yeah. Also, I think the boyfriend is going along with it because she's probably out of his league. And maybe she is a little insecure about the facial scar and she doesn't realize how much better she can do. So in order to make sure she never realizes she can do better, he's got to keep her down with him. 
Maybe, yeah. That yeah. makes sense, that no? That makes sense, too, yeah. Also, anytime you have to constantly say it's just a joke over and over again, in an argument, in a debate, just drop it. I mean, you could have meant it as a joke, but at this point, someone's feelings are hurt. Just you repeating that isn't suddenly going to be like, you know what? Ah, 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 ah. That was a good one. Like, they're not going to... What are you thinking? You crazy? This is the last one. One last one. Okay. I like it. Keep a guy coming. deleted his girlfriend's Instagram. He used to throw away because of course he did. But we're gonna call him Small Willy Will. Small Willy Will is 27 years old and he's the type of guy that takes so much pride in the fact that I don't have Facebook. Oh, I don't have TikTok. Oh, I don't have Instagram. Oh, I don't even do YouTube. Oh, I don't have Twitter. No, um, I'm a private guy and I like to keep my personal life private. Anyways, he has a 24 year old girlfriend and he thinks she's obsessed with Instagram. Why does he think that? Does she have an addiction? Does she need to go to rehab? Well, he says, my girlfriend on the other hand is obsessed with Instagram. She's got over 800 photos posted on Instagram and is constantly scrolling through Instagram every waking moment when she's not working or sleeping. She would rather spend time attention seeking from her 5,000 followers than spending quality time with me. Maybe you're just boring. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> like, have you thought about that? Because, like, Instagram is fun, but it's not that fun. Like, you must be really boring for her to choose Instagram over you. I confronted her a few times about this in the last few years. So, yeah, they've been dating a while, and she always, she always tells me she's going to cut down on her Instagram usage, but she never does. Now, last week, she's using my laptop because hers was being fixed, and I noticed that she forgot to log out from her email. The guy goes on to his, her Instagram forgets password that shit her emails locked in resets password googles how to delete instagram he's literally recounting all of this deletes her it doesn't deactivate deletes her instagram he said she woke up the next morning started screaming and crying about how he betrayed her because you know he permanently deleted it instead of deactivating it i mean there are 800 pictures from the last 10 years of her life that are now gone. I think she's being incredibly childish and throwing a tantrum over some random app. Am I the asshole? <laughs> a Redditor pointed out, quote, I am a private guy and I like to keep my personal life private. Describes his entire relationship and bitches about his girlfriend on Reddit. Someone commented, this is the type of guy that only thinks it's social media when girls do it. It's like mean? saying when, like, some guy will sit there and be like, Oh yeah, you like meta? Oh yeah, I like love meta. Oh yeah, oh, oh this is a really big um, billion dollar tech unicorn that I've been really into and I've been like studying it and like studying the algorithm. It's called TikTok. And then when a girl is on TikTok, he's like, Ugh, I hate girls that are in social media. Does that make sense? Yeah. Like it's only social media when a girl does it. Oh, like they they make their TikTok feel like it's a fucking unicorn tech company and I'm like market research, market evaluation, you know what I mean? I'm like looking into the deets, I'm like trying to stay updated on the entrepreneur, what's like in the market and like what's doing well and like the algorithms and like the news and the current updates. <sighs> <laughs> and then like when a girl does it, he's like, oh my god, are you liking pictures on Instagram again? <laughs> the loot. Yeah, Chad, I fucking am, okay? I got so heated from that. The saddest part is she probably changed her phone frequently and her Instagram might have been the only place that she stored all these memories. I really hope that she broke up with this guy because it's like, Instagram is one thing and it, I feel like with people like this, it always leads down deeper. Yeah, it's just like violating. Stop, yeah. stop, stop like... Yeah. Stop doing shit. Like, stop... You think these assholes ever change? Because people call, everyone calls them an asshole. They're like, oh man, I am an asshole, huh? Or they just go so. into defending mode. Most of them defend themselves in the comments. <laughs> like, I don't even know. Like, I think a lot of them, I think 99% of them post onto the thread genuinely thinking uh -huh. they're going to get flooded with, nah, dude, you're not the asshole. Dude, that was valid. Like, fucking facts, bruh. <laughs> and then they just get wrecked by men, women, anybody. Just like, you're the asshole, dude. Like, what's wrong with you? You're a, you need therapy. Wow. Go ram yourself into a wall. And they just get so defensive. 
I genuinely think they post it thinking they're gonna get not the asshole uh, tax. Well, that's good then. They 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 probably do get their ego hurt. I don't know. You think no? people like this get their ego hurt? Yeah, they probably get annoyed. Yeah, how do people like this exist? Do they live in a vacuum? Because I can't imagine you. Who's not putting them in their place in their regular day to day life? Yeah. Who's the worst asshole of them all? You know, I can't even say that it's Ash because you know he yeah, is. Ash the but he's got no. some issues. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel like. Oh, Condom Boy is just kind of gross. Yes. Kind of gross and insecure. Oh, um, oh, oh! F Kevin is the worst. Who's Kevin? The one with the mega asshole major league family story. Oh yeah, that that's fucked up too. Yeah, that's the worst. That's bad. But then the the um the bowing one's bad too. It just tells me everything about this guy. Yeah. That's probably really bad in yeah. to live with someone like that. Do you think he ever like wears any shade of pink or purple or is that too emasculating? He'd Duh. probably just be wearing red, white, and blue. <laughs> <laughs> I can say that. I am literally an American citizen, okay? Those are my colors too. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. <laughs> Let me know in the comments. Let me know who's the biggest asshole of all of these stories. And what are your thoughts? What would you do if you were in these situations? And I hope you guys enjoyed. Make sure to check out Case Defy linked in the description. And I'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye.